In the beginning was chaos, from which the universe was born. At its edge, the Earth started its existence. At first, the Earth was fire. The planet's surface began to cool. The continental plates took shape and pushed up mountain ranges. Two and a half billion years ago, minerals began to recrystallize under immense pressure and heat, miles below the Earth's surface in the heart of the Karelian mountain range in eastern Finland. Through this metamorphosis, a rare creation of nature was born. The talc-based, magnesite-rich stone mass known as soapstone. human being appeared on its surface. Mankind harnessed fire and discovered soapstone. It was a mystical stone, heavier than any other stone, and it could be carved. At first, amulets and images of gods were crafted from this special stone. Mother Nature bestowed it with the right properties for an oven stone. High specific gravity, a phenomenal ability to store heat, and long-lasting heat resistance. A hundred years ago, the fame of this miracle stone reached Helsinki, where a respected group of gentlemen established an enterprise known as Swarm and Wolukivi, Finnish soapstone. The founders came from famous Finnish industrial families, Benjamin Frosterus, Paul Chemilevsky, Axel Tigerstedt, Ugo Lindberg, Knut Selin, Axel von Knoring, Theodor Talkvist, Leon von Fahler, and Karl Mannerheim. Soapstone's fame spread rapidly to the imperial courts of St. Petersburg and Moscow. The stone was shipped from the Nunnalathi Harbor and through the Saima Canal to become building and oven stone material for the palaces in Russia. Hundreds of stone workers and their families moved to Nunnalathi. The work was hard and demanded great skill. There were only a few machines. The stone was sawn by hand. period was soapstone's golden age. In the hands of skilled sculptors, soapstone yielded the splendid columns, portals, base reliefs, and embellishments of Finland's national buildings. The era's architects sought Finnish forms and building materials. The new century arrived, and the export trade with the East ended with the Russian Revolution. Europe went to war. The world had more important things to do than think about soapstone. People came to their senses again, and a new era of magnificent household appliances commenced. 
wood stoves gave way to central heating and supermodern electric ranges. Many worthy traditions faded during the era of industrial and technological development. So did the importance of soapstone. The quarrying activity came to an end, and for 20 years, the stone workers of Nunnanlahti were only part of memory. The stone workers' houses fell in, but the stoves endured, a reminder of the village's day in the sun. In the summer of 1980, all that was left of Nunnanlahti was an abandoned quarry surrounded by a thick row of shrubs and in the middle of the desolation, a few deserted houses. Time had performed its task. People began to go back to their roots and began to value a crackling fire and natural building materials once again. In 1980, the old enterprise was revived under the guidance of a new entrepreneur. It resumed under the old name, Suomen Vuologivi Oy, Finnish Soapstone Limited, but soon took on a more striking modern name, Tulikivi, Firestone. At first, it was difficult since machine tools for soapstone's manufacture did not exist. The company had to design them on its own, with the support of Finnish machine manufacturers. But today, the Nunnanlahti plant hums along with state-of-the-art production lines, automated and electronically controlled. The stones are measured by laser beams and cut by diamond-tipped saws. The range of stove designs acquired a new look as well. Industrial designer Hannu Kahönen describes the work as follows. Soapstone is a stubborn companion, like us Finns. You can't simply force it to become a stove. Soapstone raised from the heart of the earth is annoyed. It doesn't become a stove that easily. It takes a designer who is just as stubborn to create it. Nowadays, people are seeking for a primitive, Finnish way of urban living. The concept has to start with fire. For old forest people like us, fire is an element close at hand. Somehow, the city people lost their connection with fire though. Now this connection needs to be restored. Many builders have discovered a new affection for this odd creation by Mother Nature. Nowadays, you'll find soapstone in churches as well as in taverns. They call it the quiet stone, since it doesn't create any noise walking on it. Its surface is tight and soft as silk. It's a humble, appreciated building material, which succumbs beautifully to the designer's will. It is a durable, natural material, elegant in a quiet way. It doesn't force itself on you.
Soapstone's ultimate destiny is to become a bake oven in a world filled with the aroma of fresh baked pastry. In North Karelia, people have always maintained their opinion that there is no better bake oven in the world than one made of soapstone. It bakes long and evenly and gives baked goods the refined aroma of a wood oven that even the best electric oven or bread machine can't produce. A new artisanship has grown up around Tulikivi. The craft of custom-made stone structures and ovens, such as this Art Nouveau classic, designed by Eliel Saarinen. It continues to be made by hand. Mother Nature's long-hidden soapstone has thus proven rather a success. And what does the future hold in store for this mystical stone? A slightly different setting compared to the one from a hundred years ago will await you today in the stone village of Nunnanlahti in eastern Finland. A dynamic, international, publicly listed company has grown around Tulikivi's soapstone quarries, a company employing over 300 North Karelians and exporting more than half of its production. In its field, Tulikivi has rapidly grown to become the market leader in the Western world. This old stone is a bit surprised about the fuss it has caused. And it's a little bit embarrassed to have received such a warm welcome in the homes of Europe. A less aware human being might easily assume that a wood-fired Tulikivi has no place in this nuclear-powered era of superlatives. Quite the contrary. Environmentally conscious human beings can warm themselves standing right next to a Tulligivi fire without a great deal of concern. Wood heating is an environmentally friendly alternative. Tulikivi's story is just a beginning, since will there ever be a chance that we lose our love for the warmth of a crackling fire and the romance of watching the dancing flames? The aura of soapstone and the peaceful warmth of a wood stove are treasures which always will be with us. They say that the pleasing luster of a burning fire is the world's oldest television program. It will continuously soothe our stressed minds and will give our dreary thoughts new inspiration.